I'm back in London in a couple of weeks. I think I'll be down in London about, well, so far, I know I'm definitely going to be there four times this year. Um, up and down, up and down on the train. Um, and then I've got a show to go to down on the south coast of England as well. A um, couple of talks to go and do. A few more of those tours that I've been going out and doing uh, for people. Ford are involved with that now. They're, they're giving us three vans, I think. So wow. we can use over the next three years. It was brand new. It, it was, it had, I think it had 79 miles on it, Ford Transit um, van. It's like a car inside. It really was. It had every option you can think of. It must have been about 50,000 English pounds to buy it. I, I don't think I'd pay that much for a for a work vehicle, but some some people think I suppose you're in them more than you are your normal car, aren't you? But yeah. Then, That's awesome. Then to go and throw a load of dirty tools in the back of it and on and off building sites and then <laughs> in, in and out, because especially the past couple of weeks when it's been raining and you're diving back in the van to shelter from the rain and you're covered in mud and I suppose if you're a nice clean trade like an electrician or something like that, it won't be too bad. But it's all and it's always muddy and wet there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> my road, my road's flooded at the minute. Really? Yeah, it, it, it's been shut for I don't know four days now, but people are still driving through it. And there's the the road's shut. It's got road closed written all over it. People are moving the road closed signs out of the way and driving through, getting stuck, and then blaming the local authority because the roads are flooded. Well, don't drive through it then. Yeah, <laughs> there's that sign there for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're just still getting snow. We're supposed to get another five inches, I think, Friday, overnight, Thursday into Friday. So it was like 60 degrees here yesterday, <clears throat> Fahrenheit. And then, yeah, then it's back down to 28 today. <laughs> it's wild, but I'll be out of here in under a month now, back to Dubai. So get some sunshine over there anyway. So Yeah, before it gets stupidly hot oh, yeah i'll come back home then i'll um as soon as it starts to heat up there i'll be heading back and it should be getting nice here by then so yeah i was speaking to chris the other day and he said it was it was uh, really good weather at the minute yeah there. yeah he's loving it he left here on the first so you know pretty much at the peak of the day after he left we got like 10 inches eight inches or 10 inches of snow they were calling for like 20 some inches but we end, we only ended up getting about less than half of what they thought but that was the day after he left so he just beat it and then he got back there and you could tell he was just like refreshed like oh it's so nice here just after being here in the cold for he was here for three months so that went quick that went, it went really so quick. fast him and I were just because I told him that you and I were doing this and um I said you know we keep putting it we've we keep pushing it back for like basically the last three weeks and he's like and you guys didn't do any while I was there and and it was like wow he's right it really has been that long yeah yeah but it it, it did go that fast good old catch up yeah for sure catch but yeah it's good to see it's good to see you uh so busy yeah with everything it, think, getting the word I out there like since we last spoke it's definitely turned the corner with what I'm trying to do. Um, people are starting to recognise and understanding that they do need to do a bit more with the, the staff, um, with the people that they work with and with the people that they work for. And even <clears throat> the individuals now are starting to realise that we all need a little bit of help and support every now and again. And it doesn't matter. You can be the leader of a multi-million pound company or you can just be a one-man band that is just you on your own no matter what level you are within business or within the workplace we all need a bit of help and support and, and a lot of people are realizing that and a lot of people are realizing that it doesn't have to be all mental healthy and talking about uh, everything like that all the time it can just be as simple as a conversation as simple as what we're doing now just yep. a good catch um checking in with your friends checking in with your work colleagues checking in with the, the people that you do work with people that you haven't spoke to in a little bit and yeah it, it does it does make a massive difference in people's lives absolutely yeah it's just uh that's the sort of stuff that changes um changes the culture so to speak you know just uh creating that openness can prevent a lot of 
the major problems, you know, it, if people feel comfortable when they're going to work, it's not such a toxic. Now, of course, you're still going to have those situations where that person probably should seek some professional help or whatever, but at least in that situation, they'll be comfortable enough to say that, you know, to say, Hey, I need a little bit of help or whatever. So just having that informal kind of approach to it. Yeah. Yeah. And if people are having more and more conversations that the, they might start to realize I think I need to take this a step further because what we're doing is great but it, it's not enough for me I, yeah. I need some more I need some more structure um, about getting myself back on the right track and if the if people hadn't been having those conversations people wouldn't realize how important it is and how important it is to look after your physical and your mental health yeah yeah I think everybody gets and it's just human nature is you you get used to feeling a sort certain way whether it's men- mentally or physically you know yeah. like uh like I have a bad shoulder I, I've had it since I heard it playing sports in high school and I just I had surgery on it and it's given me trouble ever since and I just sometimes I'm like I think I get so used to having pain in my shoulder that the days that I don't have pain in my shoulder I'm like wow this feels really good and you forget what it feels like to not be in pain and that's the same as your mental your mental well-being too you forget what it's like to not be sad or anxious or you know whatever the whatever you might be feeling you forget how how good it feels to be happy yeah and and i think pain physical pain or chronic pain you've been pain for a long time because no matter what you do within this industry whether you, whether you drive heavy machinery or whether you sweet floors every day for some minute it's still heavy hard work and it mm-hmm. um play habit with your body and if you've got a niggle and you don't get it sorted it only gets worse and worse and worse and worse and then that can lead to affecting your mental health as well and it can start to break down that yep. chronic pain is a, is a massive thing and I, and I don't think people realize it or they don't put two and two together i think sometimes no no i've uh you've probably seen it i've talked about chronic pain in a few different posts I've done usually I feel like it's with kind of with other things that I'm talking about but that's such a big one yeah just how it can lead to bigger problems you know when in regards to your mental health yeah or too if you think about the amount of drugs and alcohol Mm. that is in the industry how many of those people would be using those things to deal with that chronic pain you know taking whatever to feel better or just drinking so they're numb or whatever you know so that could be feeding into not only the the mental health stuff but the drug and alcohol which it's one it's all it all goes hand in hand but um it could be feeding in the sever- into the severity of the drugs and alcohol too yeah absolutely and it can lead on to other problems and like say addictions and yeah. then you think oh, i need i need the alcohol or the the substance whatever they're using because I need to function. If I don't have that, I, I can't function, yeah. and it, it turns into a vicious cycle. And, and it and it can be um, the ha- horrendous place to be in. It's difficult to get out of. Absolutely, it's all it's all such a slippery slope, especially for the construction industry, because it's such a such a demanding thing on your body and your mind, and your home life, and your. I mean, if you if you own a construction company, you're your finances you know the up and down there's no stability really with it so yeah it's a pretty can that's why I think it's so unhealthy at times yeah and I think sometimes people think oh it's it's only one drink after work and it's only whatever and, and before you know it, you, you've gone down a dangerous path and, yeah and it's one drink turning into 10 drinks every night um, yeah but it is a slope and, and I think pressure as well can bring that like like you're just talking about then about running a, a construction company a, a lot of people now that I'm speaking to is the people that are running companies and saying there's there's pressure with labor shortages there's pressure with um finance there's pressure with too much work people are just over stretched so far and doing too much and um, because it is such a feast and famine industry that they think I need to make hay while the sun shines and get loads, yeah. of, loads of work and loads of money. And what they're doing, they, I, I teach them, well, I don't teach them, I tell people to set boundaries for themselves mm-hmm. and learn to say no. I mean, we spoke about this a couple of times, but I think it is really important because people 
don't want to say no because they think, oh, I might need that work because of this, that, and the other. But if you turn around to the, like I, I said it to the woman, so I've just finished the job today, just a little job, putting artificial grass down for somebody. And they said, right, can you give us a price for doing this patio uh, paved area? I went, can, but I'm not going to be able to get to you till probably September time, something like that at the minute. And I don't want to give you a price now because the way materials are going, everything like that, it could be up and down. She so said, right, okay, well, book a slot in for me around September time and we'll speak sort of um, June, July time, August time, and we'll get a proper price off you. And if if the price is good, we'll go for it. It was like, yeah, absolutely fine. That's yeah. fine. Such an easy fix there, you know, instead of yeah. making promises that um, my, one of my mom's good friends would just was kind of, they had a quote done for an addition on their house and they were quoted one thing and then it took him so long to get back to her. The price went way up. And then of course, then she's angry because mm. they had been planning for this addition on their house and it, the, the price, I mean, it was a significant in, increase in price. And then she's angry and I'm sure that she probably voiced that to him, to the, you know, the contractor or whatever. And then that's all the stress that weighs on those people, upsetting people, all that stuff. But if you're just open up front, if you're just up front with them in the moment when they ask, you know, yes, I can look into this, but it might be different yeah. by the time that rolls around. You take the guessing out of it then. Yeah. And you take that Absolutely. pressure off yourself. Yeah. And it's, it's that, it's that. <clears throat> unnecessary pressure that we put on ourselves it, not learning to say no or not saying not learning to say no in the right way you don't have yeah. to be blunt or abrupt no. with people say no but you can just say absolutely i can do this for you but one i haven't got the capacity at the minute and two yeah. the way the markets are we, we can change it around and another one i say to people is that if you are too busy but i'm scared of losing the work i said all right well if you don't want to damage your reputation by or or scared of losing the work i said what you probably will end up doing is damaging your reputation because more so they, for sure more so yeah, more damaging if, if if they if you say to them yeah yeah i can do it and you don't turn up straight away you're you know in your head that i don't know where i'm going to find the time to do this putting more unnecessary pressure on yourself and then they're going to be relying on you and waiting for <clears> you <throat> And you're not turning up, so they're going to be phone calls. You're not. You're going to start getting anxiety when your phone's ringing constantly. Oh, is it that job, or is it this job, or that job, or whichever job it is? And then instead, just turn around and say, "I can't. I can't do that job for you at the minute. But please bear me in mind <coughs> for the works um, at the minute. I just don't. I just don't have the capacity to carry out that work. I would love to work with you, and I'd love to do the work for you." but I don't want to promise something that I can't deliver and let you down. Yeah. They know where they stand. You know where you stand. There's yeah. no unnecessary pressure. And they'll remember, oh, don't use Rob because he promises you everything and, and he never turns up. Or the other flip side of it is, yeah, use Rob. He didn't get that job last time, but he told us and we knew where we stood and it, he's always up front and open with it all. And it just works out better for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's just that transparency and... Um yeah letting people know what your capacity is at the moment there's and honestly if you have if you, you can even frame it this way if you have somebody who gets upset with you about being honest and just telling them where you're at I is that really the type of people you want to do work with anyway like I know that probably sounds bad especially from a business owner's perspective you don't want to turn potential work away but I hear my mom say that all the time with even what she does with you know running out like party buses and stuff if if somebody wants to give her a hard time about her pricing in her mind right away, she's like, I kind of hope this doesn't even, I kind of hope they turn this down because I don't really want to deal with this. Like she's got people all the time wanting to use her services. So I, in her mind, she's like, this is just probably going to be a hassle start to finish. And is it worth it? Is it worth my energy? Is it worth me missing out on potential other customers who are probably going to come back more quality type of clients who are probably going to come back in the future anyway like those type of people are probably never going to come back and use you again exactly people wanting a deal out of you and just you get no party wins in that yeah that side of, excuse me in that side of it and it's it just and learn, learning to switch off as well in an evening yeah um, 
It's called Pizza and Coronas. <laughs> oh, Pizza and Coronas, don't yeah. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, um, I, I, like a year ago, probably, I would have been sat in front of the computer uh, either working a price out or doing something. Yes, I do need to get these prices done. And yes, I do need to get all this content out that I've got. But it can, it can wait till I've got a bit more capacity to do it. I need this downtime to rest, recover, relax, re-energize. And, and more than anything, get a bit of motivation to do it as well, because yeah. you can be doing, it's great being busy and having all this stuff going on, but if I'm doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I'll soon get sick of it and think, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And then you, you lose your momentum with it and, and you end up doing a half ass job. Um, people go, oh no, I'm not using Rob anymore because he's, he's not, he's not, putting not effort in my yeah yeah exactly and it's 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 really important to switch off um, i've seen an interesting post on instagram today saying should we have two phones so one's your work number one's your personal number now i, I used to have two phones for work um, and one for personal but then you went <laughs> i end up giving people end up with my personal number anyway and then yeah. so it, if my work phone was switched off to ring me on my personal phone and all that sort of stuff. But again, that was before I used to set boundaries for myself. I shouldn't have given my mobile number out. Yeah. Um, and it it's um it's it's all about learning to set these boundaries. I think that's that's a big one that I'm trying to push at the minute with people. And you can still set boundaries even after the fact, even if they do have your phone number, you can say to them, Hey, um, I, I will get to this, but I don't really I don't take phone. I don't take calls after business hours or, you know, I'm hanging out with Lou and the boys. So I just, I'll get back to you when I'm, when I'm available again, like you can still set boundaries after the fact. I think we all get guilty of, Oh, I should have put, I should have let this person know or set this boundary. Now it's out of control, but you can still reel that stuff back in. Yeah. And you might have to tell some people a few times, so, you know, some people don't really get the hint the first time you tell them. But after yeah. a while, they will. They will. Yeah. And it's it's, it's good that you're doing, because it, it's a two-way street business as well. What, big, although the people are spending money with you, um, getting you in to come and do a service for them, on the flip side of it, you've got to make sure you're working for the right people. And like like you said it before, the uh, are these people that are ringing you at 9, 10 o'clock at night and putting unnecessary pressure on you and not listening to you and not realizing that you do have a, a family life or a life outside of work mm -hmm. um are they really the people that you want to work for yeah and it's it's worse too i think because now like we live in a time where everything is instantaneous we have 100 percent access to each other whenever we want and it's yeah. just like that's such a it's so unhealthy you know like i think it used to be you wouldn't call people after you know during like dinner time it's crazy yeah. to me how many phone calls my mom will get like for like people wanting to do my mom and stepdad both own businesses and how much their phone will, will ring during like the evening when people know they're at home trying to yeah. relax or whatever like there's just so much direct access all the time to to people and it's just it's become yeah it's become out of control I think all of that I stuff am. just the I did a podcast with a guy called Chris Shaw um, and he runs a really successful uh, small domestic construction company in the northwest of England and he says he has to, when he goes on holiday, he has to switch all his notifications off. Yeah. Or, or even in an evening, he says it could, he'll be getting emails off clients at 12 o'clock at night or the, the clients probably go into bed and sat there and thought, right, I need to email Chris. And his phone will be buzzing away and it, 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 it'll then give him the, I don't know what's the right way. It's not anxiety, but you know, like when you, you, you want to look, you, you, have, feel yeah. like you need to look yeah. all the time and then you might read it and it might be a crappy email. And it's like, Oh, that's it now. Can't I can't sleep. Get to sleep. Yeah. 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 Oh. I kind of refuse to, after a certain point of the night, I like, um, I refuse to look at my phone anymore, especially I don't like I've kind of gotten rid of a lot of like I don't have Facebook anymore I, I don't have Twitter anymore I just have Instagram and the stuff I follow on there is not you know it's uh, there's not a lot of like drama on my feed so 
but at one point in time, that's how I like just scrolling, even just scrolling social media, you get like that, you get like in a bad mood just because people are awful to one another. And you're just, so I got to a point where I just had to put my phone down. And then I eventually got to the point where I just started getting rid of stuff. Cause it, you know, for me, none of that stuff is worth losing <laughs> my, my peace of mind over losing sleep over. Absolutely not. And I, I think Facebook's terrible for it. I, I, yeah. I very, very rarely go on it. Very rarely go on it. Um, I can lose hours and hours on TikTok before I allow <laughs> myself to it. Like watching dogs and motorbikes and cars and stuff like that. And I think, oh, God, I need to get back to doing something. Um, and I, I have to say, if I'm sat editing a video or a podcast, I'll have to put my phone away from me. I mean, even now, while I've been doing this, I've had. Uh, um, how many notifications there uh, well I've just had, I've had like, I probably can't see because it's too bright I've yeah. got about 29 notifications to get back to and it's buzzing I keep moving it because I can hear, hear it vibrating going yeah. off constantly but that's a that's lot it. that's how our uh, uh, Orcs and Saldi there's like 19,000 followers on there and it's just constant like I turn the notifications off on my Instagram because I can't I can't do the I can't the buzzing if yeah. I'm working or whatever, I, uh, if just even hearing that buzzing, like pulls my attention to that. And it's just all of that stuff you can get back to later. You know, once you've finished the things you need to do, I apparently I'm just too ADD. I like it. Like instantly I hear it and I want to look at it. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm like I've, I've got attention span of a goldfish. <laughs> yeah. I'm Especially... usually, I can be, do pretty good, but sometimes I'm like any distractions like that. I'm like, I have to block them out. Yeah, I am, especially if I'm sat in front of a computer and I'm doing something that I don't... That you don't want to do. Yeah, well, do you know what? I, I was going to say that I don't enjoy, but I am starting to enjoy, like, the, the blog posts, uh, blog yeah. bits that I do, um, the video edits. Now I'm getting my head around the video editing. Yeah. Um, I'm starting to know all the shortcuts and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, right, you know, because I, I did one. Um, I edited a video two weeks ago uh, or no just over a week ago and it was it was only like a 12 minute video that would have taken me two days to do it took me five hours which still sounds like an astronomical amount of time for like a 12 minute video but when uh, you know Lindsay for editing yeah. these down looking at clips and redoing clips and making everything yeah. marry up and it, it's it's a lot of work that goes into them but it is I used I used to lose focus so easy on stuff like that yeah. but now I can I can do it quite quickly well, not yeah. quite quick, quickly. you get into like a rhythm of it um and like knowing sort of what you have to do to make so when you're to the point of like say posting it on youtube you, everything you've done leading up to that now doing that part's easy because you've got the thumbnails you need and you have like you get there's like a rhythm of it after a while but yeah they can be super monotonous i um like that one of me you and chris was like close to three hours long and i always watch them back um, just to make sure there is no like audio issues or vid no videos cut out or whatever. So I always watch them back and then you have to split, I split those up. So then you have to find a good spot to, you know, to, to make it seem as natural as possible. And yeah, they're, they're monot they can be very monotonous. I get, and I movie legs a lot when it starts to get, when you're working it too hard. So then it, things freeze up and sometimes I want to throw my laptop out the window, but <laughs> They always get there in the end. I, I think the same could be said for um, like monotonous tasks at work. Yeah. If, oh, if you're yeah. doing repetitive stuff over and over, it might not be physically demanding or straining, but you, you, you can switch off and then it'd be, it, especially in construction sites, it becomes dangerous and you've got to. Yeah, because realize... you get so absent minded about it. Yeah. 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 Because and, you're you know, like, you're in such a it's like muscle memory. So at, at one, at some point, like your body's just doing all these things, your hands are doing all these, and you're not even thinking about what you're doing. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. And if, if we're not at the top of a game, then it's not, you, you, you could become da a danger to other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that that's another thing I've been trying to tell people. I'm like, would you allow somebody to come on to your uh, site that's <clears throat> toxicated? They go, no, absolutely not. I said, well, why are you allowing your staff to work in these conditions? Why are you putting your staff under these conditions? 
to do that and, and, and making them miserable, making them resentful and making them, them depressed and working in unhealthy environments, <coughs> they, they're going to switch off. They're not going to want to pay attention. They're not going to want to work for you. Yeah. And, they're, and then they could switch off. And then the next thing they could end up getting crushed by a plant or dropping something off a scaffolding or not not fitting something correctly that needs to be like, like a sign outside a shop and then a gust of wind comes or the fixings give up because they've not paid attention to how many fixings they fitted it drops and it falls and it hurts and, and damages or it yeah. could it lead to even worse thing you're killing somebody i said everybody within this industry has to be at 100 percent all the time and if if you're putting them under unnecessary pressure it's only going to lead to mistakes yeah. Yeah. And th that time too, where you're kind of checked out doing work is also more time to think about whatever you're having a hard time with, you know? So then there's that rabbit hole that people will go down with just with those repetitive tasks. They have all that time all day long to just ruminate about the things that are bothering them. So that just feeds into the, the mental health stuff for, you know, it's just this, yeah, that monotony. Yeah, that Especially for certain, um, like I would imagine like bricklaying, it's, it would be repetitive, you know, so yeah, bricklayers are I, probably, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. so like bricklayers would be at risk for those sort of things because you guys are kind of doing, like the work you guys do is really cool, but I could see where, you know, in the middle of one of those projects, you're doing a lot, you're doing the same thing kind of over and over again. Yeah, you guess. I mean, there's some people that I speak to and they're like, oh, no, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm like, it bores me. Yeah. If I do too much of it, I get bored of it. And But, yeah, you can, you can definitely sort of zone out and then just start chewing on on whatever's going on in, in your in your own mind. You end up catastrophizing it. Is that the right word? Yes. Um, yeah. And making it worse and worse and worse. And, and another one was driving. I used to do a lot yeah. of driving. Um, and just sat for hours in, in the pickup or in the van and just back and forth up and down the motorway, especially this time of year when it's dark in the morning, or it's not, well, especially in the depth of winter when it's dark in the morning, dark at night, um, yeah. and, and you're just in a gloomy environment all the time. And then the only time you're in the daylight, you're working. And you're you don't working. Yeah. And, and people, I don't think people realize the power of just those little things like the, um, the like the seasonal stuff um yeah. the the lack of sunshine like we never have sun here from like october to may you know we yeah. just don't have sunshine and yeah you like it's dark like you said it's dark in the morning it's dark um early in the in the evening and then you know i i can sort of feel myself sometimes as the sun starts to go down i'll start like that's kind of when i'll start overthinking stuff and and all like just those little things that of course are outside of your control but sometimes you just have to tell yourself, this is only because of this. You know, this is yeah. only because I haven't gotten any <laughs> vitamin D for months and months and months or whatever. You know, it's all it, it doesn't have to be because you're messed up or sick or anything. It's just like a compilation of of small things that are out of your control that you just have to get a grasp on, you know, and be able to tell yourself, like, I'm just tired or I whatever. I'm just. I kind of got the the winter blues a little bit, you know, bored. Yeah, there's there's a, a medical term for it over here called SAD. So it's seasonal affective disorder. Yeah. Yep. So if yep. you're feeling sad, it might just be the weather. That's a real thing. There's another yeah. thing. There is another acronym I used to like to use with. I may have told you this before. I, I love to use with teenagers because it was such a simple way to look at it. It's called HALT. You got to ask yourself if you're if you're feeling like edgy or anxious or maybe a little irritable or sad or whatever. Everybody's different. Yeah. But ask yourself if you're hungry, angry, lonely or tired. If you can, if nine times out of 10, if it of course, if there's nothing major going on, like you're not yeah. having some major life things happening or whatever. But a lot of the times you can narrow it down to one or more of those things you know, like yeah. hanger is a real thing. Like people get hungry and then they get short and then it's just, it, it just is like this domino effect on whatever your work or who your wife or whatever. Yeah. Tired is a big one too. I, I'm terrible for tiredness. Yeah. If I, I'm tired, I just turn ratty and snappy and horrible with people. And um, yeah, it, 
that you can really tell when I'm tired. Yeah. And again, just pushing yourself too hard all the time and yeah, learn, learning to switch And not recognize, and... I just need to go, I need a couple good nights sleep to get back to, because when you get overtired, it's, sometimes it doesn't even, one night of sleep doesn't even fix it. You need like a weekend where you just sleep. Like you have to give your body, your your brain, especially that time to, to catch back up. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, you, you, it's like your brain's full of lactic acid because it's just mm-hmm. working constantly all the time. And yeah, people, people will pinch time out of the sleep time, yeah. won't they? The time off to, to do work, to do that extra bit. Yeah. I mean, like Henry Ford came up with it, didn't he, with the, the eight hour working day. So you had yeah. eight in the, in the 24 hours, you'd have eight hours sleep, eight hours rest, eight hours work, but it never, never works like that, does it? You end no. up doing 16 hours work. It's a work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not enough sleep. And then you try and fit exercise in it and socializing and family time. Else. And yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I think we just kind of lose track of those things over time and like how important just those little things are. And now we have that, I think you and I have talked about this before too, it frustrates both of us, like that hustle mentality of I'm just hustling all the time and I'm, you know, getting this done so I can have the nice car and the the nice house and all this stuff. And it just, that is just so, nobody hustles 24 hours a day. Nobody's capable of hustling 24 hours a day. Like you have to, you have to unwind and turn and switch off. Yeah, you do. You need to. Yeah. and people need to realize that what what they see all these people saying you need to be up at four o'clock in the morning and going to the gym and be going do this that or the other and working all the hours because if you're not if you're not working the competition's working and they're going to get ahead of you but yeah that competition will burn themselves out in the long run whereas you for sure steady away steady away steady away keep going chipping away at it and you're doing it at your pace um and a, a lot of these people that you speak to that have made it so made it whatever that is and got to the, that destination where they wanted to be and they've got a good bank balance people don't realize what they've had to sacrifice to get to that point and then yeah they use i've had to sacrifice all this that and the other but a lot of people that you speak to if you turn around so <laughs> if, if you could take back that time uh, and to make those memories with your family and make those memories with your friends and go on days out and trips and holidays and things like that rather than being hustling and working all the time would you i bet inside 99 percent of them would say yeah absolutely yeah. i wish i could take that time back yeah some you're right there's probably a small percent that that stuff's just not the only thing important to them is probably probably money but yeah. um yeah i think there is tons of sacrifice and it like life's a trade-off you just have to ask yourself if that's what you want if that's what you want that's fine you just have to realize what that's gonna take to have and what you're gonna you know on the other side what's gonna be left behind that you don't get to have and it's the same if you choose to kind of live a more level or stable where you can do both work and life but everybody's different everybody's desires are different and yeah it just depends if you're willing to make those sacrifices because it's true. Like like what you said, it does take that kind of lifestyle takes tons of sacrifices. Yeah, it does. And for me now, we've said it before, haven't we, that I worked by myself time. So I, I can go off and do bits that I enjoy. I can go off and do podcast recordings or whatever. Like tomorrow, I won't earn any money tomorrow doing what I'm doing, going and doing these recordings and things like that. Well, I'm, I do it because I enjoy it and I'm doing it with good people and yeah. I, I can earn enough money in the week or the, the past couple of weeks to to allow have me to have, day, to have this these days and go out like um was it last week or the week before I think it was last week I just took a day off in the week I had work I had work booked in but it, it was the uh, raining so I thought <clears throat> you know what I'm not, I don't want to work in the rain I've done enough of that. Yeah. So I just came home and spent the day with the kids. And then I uh, had a friend come up from London and we spent the day with him. In fact, it was last Wednesday. He came, stayed over here, 
um and we went out for the day but no it's it's important to i could have gone and earned some money but would i have would i've had that time to go and do what i wanted to do instead of going uh, I got, going out and earning money I'd, at the moment I'd rather I'm a bills paid yes have we got a little bit of money behind us yes I'm a comfortable yes well, I can afford to take these days off yeah I can I can afford to go and have time for me and do the things that I want to do the things that make me happy because yeah. if I'm happy it, it feeds positivity and I know the the destination is not to be happy all the time because if you are happy all the time then it just becomes a numb emotion because you don't right. know the difference between everything but um, it, it's just giving me joy, giving me fulfillment. And, and that's uh, what I'm, matters. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm, I'm loving the life balance. And yes, was it yesterday, Monday, I was at Louise's mum's house. And I seen a couple of vans for the old company that I used to work for. I, I, it was weird. I, like this weird feeling in my stomach. I'm like, oh, I miss that life. And I thought, no, I don't, because I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. I'm off on a Monday. Like I've had, yeah. Monday, that's, I've had Monday off as well this week. So I had the whole weekend. I had Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday with Lee. So I've had four days off in the past two weeks. Yeah, um, which you probably never have done. No, I wouldn't have. I, yeah. I would have been. I, I, was, I was actually talking to Lee about it. We were sat on the sofa watching some on Netflix. And I said to him that, I've got a part of me inside me that's like, you should be doing something, blah, blah, blah. But imagine when I was when I was in that mindset of the toxic hustle and you have to work all the time, that that feeling or that noise would have been so loud that I would have had to do something to try and pacify it and shut it up and go and do something. Yeah. Whereas now it's like a muffled... Where yeah. I can ignore it and switch off from it now. And it's there. It, that My drive is still there. And my focus is still there, but it's not dominating my life. Um, yeah. I, I, I can, uh, I've learned to distinguish between the two of when I do really need to put the effort in and do need to work and get things done and make things happen. But then I can switch off and switch off. take chill time yeah. and do other things. Yeah, work that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. That's a tough lesson to learn for sure, I think, for a lot of people. But, um, and it's all trial and error. Hmm? You know, like it, you're not always going to get it right, but and it won't happen overnight. I mean, it's taken yeah. years to realize it. Like we said in previous episodes, it took to almost losing the marriage to to realize these things in my life. And, yeah, to kind uh, of snap you out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and some people even that sort of thing doesn't snap them out of it. No. So that's that's the sad. The sad truth with like what a lot of people face is yeah even even that sort of thing doesn't doesn't wake them up and then they kind of wake up when it's kind of too late yeah yeah so and, uh, knowing what i went through I, I can sort of sympathize with a lot of couples that have the the, the relationships broke down because especially in in the sense of <laughs> The man feels like he needs to go out and provide for the family, and he, he seems to be doing the he's doing a good thing by going out and working all the time, so the kids can have what they want, and the, and the wife can have what they want, and it it can all lead into this toxic masculinity that that yeah. goes on a lot. When really we can, it's it's okay to stop, it's okay to rest, it's okay to show emotions, it's okay to not understand why are you feeling like this and, it, and it, it's okay to have these feelings of well I should be provided yes you should but look what you're missing out on yeah look, look all these amazing things that you're doing um, and you're still and, providing also yeah, you know absolutely. like you yeah. are you are still yeah. providing yeah you're still ticking all those boxes that you want to tick yeah you're doing it on your terms and not what you think other people should think of you should think yeah because I used to think a lot of the time that, oh, I'm being lazy for having days off. And whether that comes from, I mean, through speaking to Lee and spending so much time with him, like we'd be sat having a normal conversation and it'll eek little bits out of me. I'm like, oh, why, how have you managed to make me say that? But it, it's like he was, um, 
Oh, I've lost my train of thought now. What I was going to say then? Um, it's gone. <laughs> Mine's gone um, dead. Just like kind of what um, people's expectations. Ah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, so I I thought it was down to the fact that because I wasn't, I was an underachiever at school. Um, I know I didn't leave school with good grades, if uh, hardly any grades, and didn't go on to do further education the university and college or anything like that I went straight into an apprenticeship and worked I I always used to feel like I needed to make up for that because I used to think that mm. I, I need to keep working hard because I need to think people need to realize that Rob's a hard worker and he's not lazy and yeah. looking back now it's probably to do with the fact that I used to be lazy in school and I don't even think I was lazy in school it's because it just didn't work it just wasn't, wasn't your thing yeah yeah it wasn't my thing um, yeah um, yeah it's it, there's always two sides to that coin too like um you know the people who are like I was like good in school especially at the college level but then that sort of becomes the problem with that is that that sort of becomes your identity you know it's like I graduated you know I got my master's degree with like a 3.8 or whatever like a almost perfect GPA and um but then that almost becomes like your identity. Like, okay, I went through this really weird thing after school. Like, okay, I'm not in school now. So what do I do? You know, like, who am I? What, <laughs> what am I good at if I don't have school? Like, I can't be in school forever. So, I mean, I could, but it, I mean, it, you'd spend a, I've already spent way too much money doing it. So yeah, like that. there's like the flip, you know, there's the flip side of that too. So even people who do do well in school still have that struggle after school with you know finding out what it is that they're even good at or it, what it, if I did I go to school for something I really want to do the rest of my life or you know there's all those internal struggles even even when you are good at school so you know that's why it's important not to compare yourself to to that you know or, or to look back on that and and be ashamed that you didn't do better it just wasn't your thing you know, it's yeah, just, I'm, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, yeah. we all have our thing. And that can be, you can put unnecessary pressure on yourself that I did well at school, so now I've got to obviously do well in the work yeah. environment or exams that are coming up. I should be getting these grades and I should be achieving this because of, uh, I'm, I'm good at this sort of stuff. And it, it's, it's a, can be a, a big weight to bear on, on yourself. It is. Yeah, because you like you have so much success. Like I like I was so used to being good at everything I did. You know, I like got the good grades and I just and all that stuff. Like I didn't when I was interning, I was a, I was good at that, you know, and I was doing working in a community mental health center. I felt like I was pretty good at that. And I was also working at the time and I was able to juggle all these things and all that just came to a screeching halt. And you're like, Yeah, what am I? what am I getting now I have to find something else that I'm good at you know I have to go find and then you just you're just spinning your wheels I yeah. did spin my wheels for I feel like I'm just kind of that was I graduated almost four years ago I feel like I'm just kind of starting to get like a grip on what I want to do and kind of the direction I want to head so all of that stuff if I would have just taken a minute and not put so much pressure on myself and kind of just sat down and sat with all of that for a little bit I probably could be a lot further ahead than what I am but I just instead spun my wheels because yeah because of those unrealistic expectations or not even unrealistic unnecessary all that stuff is just unnecessary and if you really sit down and put it into perspective the people that you think are thinking about you probably aren't you know, they've got all their shit that they're working through and they're doing, they're not thinking about you. No. So worrying about what they think about what you're doing is just a waste of time and energy, you know? I, I think one of the most freeing things for me was realizing exactly what you just said there, that they probably don't care. And it's not that they don't care about you, it's because they've got their own shit going on um, and they're not, they're not doing it on purpose, but it's this massive pressure that we put on ourselves that, yeah we must we must keep up this persona of everything like that and I think I, I went I think thinking back now about school and stuff like that like you were saying the, the, the pressure that you put on yourself because you were uh, getting the good grades and everything like that and exams caught I went the opposite way to it I think 
I just automatically gave up. I, I'm rubbish at this. Why should I even bother? And that's yeah. that's what I used to think about school. And it's it's all about balancing it and realizing it. And like you've said many times before, Lindsay, it it comes back to the why all the time. Why, why, why? Yeah. And most people don't, a lot of people don't even look for their why. They just look for what they think they're supposed to be doing. And that's why there's a massive amount of people who are just chronically unhappy. Just, Mm. you know, there's, they can't find joy in anything they do. And I just feel extremely lucky because I've I've worked through that stuff. And I, I do have a lot of things in my life that bring me true joy and bring me true meaning, you know, and I feel lucky. And I, that's like, that's why I keep pushing forward with this sort of stuff, because I want more people to feel that way especially in a population of people who struggle so much you know I'm always thinking okay well that wouldn't work or that didn't work let's try like that's why I'm always kind of trying to push through that stuff because yeah like I like I think more people should get to experience like what you're doing right now like you seem to truly like what you're doing right now yeah massive it's huge it doesn't it then doesn't become work um again it goes back to you have to set your boundaries for work and life because you can have too much of a good thing but it's it becomes a pleasure rather than a chore uh um, yeah you and yeah it become doesn't necessarily become easier but it, it, it become like more enjoyable i think is the best way of putting it there's yeah. there's there's no there's no expectation there's no uh, or certainly with me I sort of go with a flow and just go with whatever I'm feeling. I post stuff on social media that I, th- I feel, well, that's what I'm feeling. There's probably other people feeling the same thing. So that's why I put, I put a reel up the other day. I, I put a mix on at work and it started to pee it down. I was like, can't control it. It's not my fault the weather's changed like this and just yeah. all of a sudden it's raining. Why put unnecessary pressure on myself? Yeah. Ended up slinging it away, the, the, the mortar mix. And I went inside and um, that particular day, I think I sat and edited some videos. So I was still productive and I still got yeah. things done. It just wasn't outside work. Um, yeah. And once you start to learn and understand all this stuff and it takes time and patience, but once you start to sort of zone in to that way of thinking, life becomes a lot more enjoyable. It does. Um, and just a lot easier. Like when you realize like, okay, all this pressure who's putting this pressure on me other than me (laughs) just and it's the silliest things like even uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine about this last night like last summer I started training for a half marathon for absolutely zero reason other than my best friend was doing it and she's like you should train with me and then I just started putting all this pressure on myself to run all these crazy miles and I was freaking miserable by the end of the summer like my body shut down and I, I like I, so I got to like the 10 mile mark. And then I'm like, after that run, I couldn't run. Like, I just couldn't do anything for like a week, which is unlike me. I'd work out pretty often. And then I was just like, why did I do this? (laughs) Why did I put myself through this? Like, it was fun in the beginning, like kind of pushing myself, but then, then it became like a thing I had to do because I started doing it. And then it was just like, okay, well, I have to do it now. I've come too far. And then I'm like, well, nobody's forcing me to do this. I'm not, I wasn't I didn't even sign up for a half marathon she did like my friend did sign up but I didn't even sign up for the half I was just training like we were kind of on the same training program and we would run together we would try to run together once a week and um then it occurred to me like this is stupid I don't have to do this I don't have to kill myself for this it was just something I was trying to prove to myself for at the sake of my at that point it was affecting my mental and my physical health (laughs) and then you and then I ruined running that which is what I always enjoy to do I I couldn't I didn't enjoy running for probably two or three months after that I just took me that long to like enjoy going for a run again I um I think Paris people say don't they comparison is the thief of joy and if you're constantly comparing yourself to previous times and and things like that and previous fitness levels that you're at or I need to be at this point and this point and this point so like you you just said it exactly there that it takes all the joy out of it it's it like, does i don't want to go out cycling i don't take i used to have garmin um stuff for my bike and like 
I, uh, sometimes still use the cadence meter so I know what I need to get to get up the stupidly big hills around here. Right, I need to stay at this so I don't blow myself out. But yeah. other than that, I don't record the times anymore. I don't use Strava anymore. I don't yeah. use any that because it it just feeds into all that. Um, it's it's if if you are training for something, uh, I'd say it's different. But if you're doing it for like just leisure there's just no reason yeah. to put that pressure yeah. on yourself it just and I started doing that with my runs too because I was getting I get like frustrated because I always plateau with my times like I always get to a point where I just can't get do any better than that time and then it was just like who who cares <laughs> like, who's he was even looking like nobody no, nobody knows nobody it, you know it's it's just me like it's not like I trying to prove I'm not gonna go become an Olympic runner you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that we do that with life just everything <laughs> just this fitness is just like a, a good example of one of the things we do but people tend to do that with life in general you know like you hear women all the time put this on pressure on themselves especially in like they're when they reach 30 like i have to have kids I have to have kids now it's like no you yeah. don't there's no rule that says you have to have kids by 30 there's no rule that says you have to be married by 25 like just relax yeah. That stuff will happen yeah. when it happens, you know? Yeah. And the more you pressure yourself, like the more your body gets stressed out and you're probably going to have a harder time doing that stuff anyway. Like it's just, yeah. yeah. people never I, let life come to them. They're always, you know, forcing life to do what yeah. they want it to do, you know? No, you make a very good point there that people do put humongous pressure on themselves. Like, oh, the person who I went to school with is, living in a massive house and earning this much money from the outside it might look like they're, that they're killing it at life when really inside they might not be yeah and if you think about like the couple say for like couples for instance who like um they seemingly have it all together they've got the nice house and the cute kids and and all that stuff and they'll post on social media about how happy they are and then you know them off social media and they're absolutely miserable with one another like fight all the time and you know, all of that stuff is just, I don't believe anything I see on social media, but it's just, <laughs> I think comparing I've, yourself to anybody on social media is a bad idea. Yeah, it is, yeah. I, I put a post on a couple of weeks ago where, it was a while ago now, I think, where it was like one Sunday morning, I was sat, I was getting annoyed because the kids are just constantly trashing the house. You get it <laughs> tidied and you look around and one of them's destroyed something on it. And we we got... And I said to Lou, right, I'm going to make a coffee. And I went in the kitchen and made some nice coffee for me and Lou and a, a warm milk for the kids. And we had pastries and stuff like that. And I, I don't know, it's just, you know, like when you get one of the moments, I was like, you know what? Who gives a shit? <laughs> Who gives <laughs> yeah. a shit that the house is a mess? And let's just, I'm just going to sit down here, enjoy this time. Yeah. With the kids going crazy. But we're sat together as a family and we're enjoying it. Uh, and he got a really good response that post when I put it on. I've seen that. Loads. That was a nice post. Yeah. 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 I, had I had loads of people messaging me going, that's my house too. My yeah. house look, doesn't look like a show home. Um, yeah. Every parent with young kids home. can resonate yeah. with that. You know, every yeah. parent. My best friend puts that kind of pressure on herself all the time to have like, she's got a six, I'm sorry, seven, five and two year old. And so like, she's got three little kids just doing their thing all the time in her house. And she's always like, oh my, I'll walk in. Sorry, my house is such a mess. I'm like, stop apologizing every time I walk in the door. Like, I, I understand. <laughs> I don't expect it, your house to be spotless. You have three young kids yeah. and her and her husband both work full time. So it's un again, unrealistic, unrealistic expectation. And for no reason, I'm not judging yeah. her at all. So it's, it's good that what again it comes back to once you start to zone in and, and realize these things life it doesn't become easier but it becomes more enjoyable I think. yeah yeah you just like sweating the small stuff and we're all guilty of that like I I definitely don't have that one down pat um like <laughs> so the day Chris left his his first flight got delayed by like two hours long enough to make him miss his second flight the big flight back to Dubai and I took him to the airport and we realized his flight had got delayed and that he was going to be rerouted from, he was going to have to fly out of New York, but then they rerouted him through Boston. 
but that flight didn't leave until 10 o'clock at night. And he was supposed to leave New York at like 10 o'clock in the morning. So it like extended his day, his already long trip by like 12 hours. And he yeah. was so, he was so chill about it. And I was just like, oh, that sucks. Like, I'm so sorry. We should have, you know, I should have looked, maybe I could have got you on a different flight or whatever. And I was like really stressed about it. And he's like, I don't know why you're apologizing. None of this is in either one of our controls. Like, it, is it going to suck? Yeah, it's going to be a long trip back. But what am I going to do? Like, you can't do anything. And I, and then I was like, he's right. Why am I stressing about this? He goes, at least you get to, cause his flight was really early. So we left the house at like three 30 in the morning to get him up to Detroit. He's like, at least you can go home and sleep if you want. He's like, I'm the one that has the long day, not you. <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, but it wasn't even my home. flight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, ended up, he ended up booking a hotel in Boston so he could sleep for at least a, a little while. Cause he had like eight hours to kill. Yeah. So it, it worked out, but I was stressing myself over and it wasn't even my flight <laughs> that got delayed. Yeah. And it's just, so I'm definitely not an expert in that sweat and the small stuff. That's for sure. But I try. <laughs> it's a big it's a it's a constant learning yeah uh, 